everybody and welcome back to the channel my name is hack and you are checking out a brand new magicka templar solo one bar build for the elder scrolls online this is part of our grind god series for eso basically powerful builds that put out a lot of aoe burst damage whose only job is to kill off a lot of enemies and to kill off those enemies as fast as possible so if like me you're looking for ways to advance your champion point ranks quickly this is going to be the build for you as usual, we'll go over everything you need to make the build work from the stats, gear set options, skills, CP 2.0, and a whole lot more. And that's coming up next. All right, everybody, here we are back on the Magicka Templar with another of our solo grind god builds for the Flames of Ambition DLC. Uh, this is gonna be a solo one bar Magicka Templar build, by the way, extremely powerful. So what I used to level up uh, my own character on PCNA right now. So let's check out the buff stats here first. So about 35,000 max Magicka, 23,000 max health, 13,000 max stamina. 4,300 spell damage, though that gets closer to 5,000 with the uh, weapon damage glyph proc. 1,500 Magicka recovery is looking good. 65% spell critical, and that does depend on your uh, weapon traits. And then our resistances with the uh, armor buff here should be pretty good for a light armor build. Yeah, sitting at about 24,000 spell resistance, 16,000 physical resistance. That's so much to say that you shouldn't really need resists because you will be killing stuff insanely fast on this build. Uh, of course, we've got 64 points into Max Magicka. Which Mother's Potent Brood is just a super cheap and easy food to run on this build. You want something with health and Magicka. The Magicka Recovery, you actually don't need it, so you could run something like Blue Food, Max Health, Max Magicka if you want. Thief Mundus to increase that crit chance. Passive Major Prophecy, we'll talk about all that stuff in a minute. Now, as far as the race, I am using Khajiit uh, for this particular setup. Why? Well, the Feline Ambush passive actually got buffed this patch, so critical damage and critical healing now at 12%. This is actually really strong, you guys. You can see our crit chance was also very high on this build, so we're doing that additional extra damage every time we crit. We also have bonus crit damage in the new CP 2.0 system. So yeah, crit damage is off the charts on this build. You also have things like all of your resources, right? Max health, Magicka, and stamina. You have all of our recoveries. So Khajiit is actually looking pretty strong this patch. I do like it. But like I said, this being a solo grind build, race doesn't play a huge factor into your overall performance. So whatever you have, it's going to be fine on this build, honestly. In terms of consumables, we went over the food potion. If you have tri-stat potions, that's going to be ideal. But to save a little bit of gold, just basic Magicka potions, that will be totally fine. You can see with tri-stat potions, we're up to 1900 Magicka recovery, 900 stamina recovery and 700 uh, health recovery, which is really, really good. So that's the basics. Let's talk about the gear next. How do we make this work? First thing is I wanted a very nice defensive set on this build. This is gonna be great for both new players with very little champion points, uh, even beginners if you're less than level 50, uh, all the way up to more advanced levels. We have a passive healing set on this build called Winter's Respite. This gives tons of really good stats, Magicka recovery, two max Magicka bonuses, and then casting abilities that leave an effect on the ground heals us and our entire group for about 2,400 health every one second. This plays very nice on Templar builds, you guys, whether it's a solo build, PvP build, healing build, whatever. Uh, this is one of my favorite sets. This is what it looks like, by the way. So we do have a ground effect here on the one bar setup. That's our uh, Templar rune, and that's also proccing the winter set, giving us that nice passive healing. Uh, you can see that coming in there. So that's what it looks like. This will be very nice when you're setting up your pull for a uh, grinding experience. Basically bring in all the enemies, slap down your rune, you'll have some nice passive healing going on while you get things situated and then you drop all of your offense on the enemies and you should pretty much stay on uh, full health the entire fight. So very nice uh, light armor set, like we said, this is from the Greymore chapter. It is an overland set, very easy to get and farm yourself or you can just buy it pretty cheap on guild traders we've got five pieces on the body there we've got the chest waist hands legs and feet with the uh, max magicka enchants on those second five piece set let's talk about our damage 
It's going to be Mother of Sorrow. Again, this is a very crit-focused build. We want lots of crit chance. We want to amplify our Khajiit passives. Templars also get 10% bonus crit damage. So having a high crit rate, that critical chance is going to be very important. That's what Mother of Sorrow does. You can see all the critical uh, stats that we get there. So we're running this on the staff with a precise staff because even more crit chance, hey, why not? And then three pieces on the jewelry. So we got the Mother of Sorrow necklace, two rings. As far as the enchants here, spell damage on all of your jewelry. If you have transmute stones, you can make these infused for a little bit of extra spell damage. That's not required though. And then the staff, I'm gonna want the weapon and spell damage enchant for the one bar setup. If you're running two bars, you can run something like a shock enchant on your front bar and then run the weapon and spell damage glyph on the back bar. Uh, I don't wanna spend too much time on this video. So if you want the two bar setup, Make sure you check out the written guide. There'll be a link for that down in the description and the pinned comment. Now, finally, let's talk about the monster set. I just wanted to keep this super simple, you guys. And I think having a crit focus build, I just wanted to run two pieces for my head and shoulders that give me bonus crit chance. So one way you could do this, which I really like, is not doing a complete monster set, but doing two separate pieces, both with a one piece crit chance bonus. So we've got Slime Craw for the hat, and then we've got Ice Heart for the shoulders, and you can see both of these give me a pretty decent bonus to my crit chance overall. Now, Slime Craw is interesting. This actually gives you the most out of any One Piece monster set. I'm not sure why that is, but it is there, so just keep that in mind. You can obviously also run two pieces of Slime Craw um, if you want the full two-piece Minor Berserk, uh, or you could run two pieces of Ice Heart if you want the two-piece uh, damage shield but I like just running two crit champs bonuses here that kind of maximizes my overall damage output. So again, the setup here is gonna be five of Winters on the body. I've got the Mother Sorrow weapons and jewelry, and then two crit pieces for the uh, monster set here. That's the basic setup. Seven pieces of light armor, max magicka on everything. And then I just have a mix of traits going on right now, divines and training. The more training you have, obviously, the more experience you will gain. Let's go ahead and talk about the one bar skills next. Let's jump into it. Super simple, solar barrage, must have ability. This comes from the Dawn's Wrath skill line. And we'll talk about this more when we get to the passives because Dawn's Wrath passives are absolutely fantastic for the Templar. But just as the skill itself, this gives you very solid magic damage. It's an AOE damage over time. So magic damage every two seconds for 10 seconds. Honestly, most fights will not last longer than 10 seconds, so this is perfect. Uh, it also has the nice radius around you, so you can see it kind of going off there as a blast wave. Uh, so that's gonna very nicely feed into our AOE setup on this build. Next up, Channeled Focus. This is from the Restoring Light Templar skill tree. That's the last ability here. And this is our ground buff. So this is what uh, procs the winter set for that extra heal. Yeah, this gives us our resistances. It gives us some extra magicka recovery. This actually doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but it's very good uh, magicka recovery, low cost, and uh, sets up some nice passives as well. So this actually increases our healing done, making that winter set actually proc for more healing every second, which is pretty, pretty nice when you have lots and lots of enemies beating on you. And we'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Next up, Inner Light. Hopefully you know this skill. It's uh, very useful mages guild skill. It's the first one you get here. It does give you passive max magicka, passive major prophecy. That's about 12% increased spell crit chance. So again, stacking that crit chance. And I have this here on purpose, um, not just for the major you know buff to my magicka, but just to have that passive spell critical. That way I don't have to worry about running spell power potions or spell critical potions. Just keep it simple, right? Next up, of course, we got the main spammable of the Magicka Templar. That's going to be Puncturing Sweep from the Adric Spear skill line. Some good passives come from this as well. Templar is amazing as far as passives go. Uh, but this is our main damage source, right? It also heals us back for a percentage of the uh, damage that we do. And it is AoE, so it can hit multiple targets. So basically what you do, lay down your rune. Make sure you got your defenses and your heals rolling. Enemies you should have already pulled to you. Make sure you have Barrage going and then just sweeps everything down. That's how that works. Uh, the last spot here is Flexible. Now, I do have Degeneration right now from the Mage's Guild skill line. 
That's going to be the second ability here. And the reason why this is on single target damage over time. So this doesn't really help with grinding. But what it does help with is increasing our overall spell damage by 20%. That's the major sorcery buff. So you want to get the absolute you know, highest spell damage on this build without using potions. You're going to have to run degeneration. Honestly, though, we have so much spell damage on this build. Yes, this might sound crazy, but you, you probably don't need this buff for overland content. Just saying, you might want to experiment with some flexible skills here. Some other things you can run. Soul Trap, you can run the, um, the morph of this that hits multiple targets. That's very strong. You can run Ritual from the Restoring Lights uh, skill tree. This gives you even more AoE damage over time. You can run a skill like Silver Leash. This is actually a very fun skill to, to run uh, on the Magicka Templar. This is a ranged pull ability that costs stamina. So you know those annoying mages and archers that you you hit them with your staff, but they don't want to come into melee range for your sweeps? Well, you just literally pull them in with the silver leash. It's pretty effective on getting those ranged enemies up close, where then they just die to your barrage and your sweeps. I will run that quite often. I'll show you how that looks in just a couple minutes. And then the ultimate here, let's talk about Thunderous Rage. That's from the Destruction Staff skill line. This just does the most damage possible. Uh, yes, you can run some Templar ultimates here if you want, but this thing is just so powerful. Uh, it has a nice long duration here. Since we're using the Lightning Staff, the duration is increased by two seconds. So yeah, give it a try. It's uh, very powerful. That's going to be the one bar setup. Like I said, if you want to see this build with uh, two full skill bars, make sure you click on the written guide uh, down below and you can see how that is set up. But let's do, a, let's do a quick poll here and see how it works. So let's go ahead and grab some enemies here. Okay, I'm starting to take some damage, so I'll go ahead and put down my rune, make sure I'm healed. Barrage, and then sweeps. There we go. You can see things are dying so fast. Here's a range guy. Pull him in. Here's another range guy. Pull him in. That was easy. Let's do one more pull. Uh, more, more. I need more guys. Give me more guys. All right, that should be enough. So let's get Barrage. Let's get Rune. Let's go ahead and pop an ultimate right there. Some stragglers here. Let's pull them into the ultimate. And yeah, you saw how easy that was. Works really well. All right, so that's the setup. What about passive skills? Well, like we said, Templar passives are some of the best in the game. You'll honestly want most of them, but I'll just point out some of the more powerful ones. Piercing Spear. We talked about the 10% crit bonus that Templars get. That's called Piercing Spear. Make sure you get that guy. Spear Wall, you get minor protection from using your sweeps. That's very nice. Uh, burning Light, you can proc more damage. And then Balance Warrior, you get weapon damage, which isn't so great on this build, but also increased spell resistance, so it is worth it. Now, Dawn's Wrath, we talked about how important this is. Prism gives you more ultimate every time you cast the Dawn's Wrath ability. So every time we use that Solar Barrage, three extra ultimate. And then Illuminate, this is Minor Sorcery, so 10% bonus spell damage. That's really good as well. Of course, Restoring Spirit, make sure you get this guy. 5% cost reduction across the board is really good. And then Restoring Light. So Sacred Ground gives us the Minor Mending passive. That's why your heals do a little bit more healing uh, when you have one of those abilities down. So you can see, I think Winters is only supposed to heal me for like 2200. It's healing for 25 every second. That's from uh, Restoring Light. Uh, that would be the main one that you want there. Yes, you want Destruction Staff passives. Yes, you want Light Armor passives. Mage's Guild is fine since we do have one of those abilities. And then obviously your racial and alchemy medicinal use makes those potions last a little bit longer. Let's jump into champion points next uh, because I want to show you some different options for this. So I'm going to go over the main ones that I have slotted. This is going to be for about 900 plus champion points. If you'd like to see lower versions of this, I do have 300 600, I'll have 900 and even 1200 CP loadouts on my website. Again, check the written guide down in the description or the pinned comment to see those different versions. As far as the green CP goes, this is your utility stuff. 
I always recommend starting with Steed's Blessing, 20% movement speed out of combat. That's a game changer. Pick that up first. Second, I always go to Gilded Fingers because free gold. Who doesn't like free gold? Get that next. Uh, and then we have some stuff having to do with treasure chests, so like Fortune's Favor, Treasure Hunter. Definitely pick those up. And then just some quality of life stuff here. So like Break Fall, Take Less Fall Damage. That's a good one. Rationer, Make Your Food and Drink Last Longer. And then Liquid Efficiency, Chance to Not Consume a Potion. Those are all very good. So I'd recommend picking those up when you are at the correct level for those, when your CP is high enough. Blue Tree, this is where things get interesting. This is our damage and our defenses, right? So everybody can start in the middle with precision. Put 40 points here right away. That's extra crit chance. That works great on this build. Once you have precision, move over here to extended might. This is your sub constellation. So if we go into here, we have these additional stars we can get. You can just put 10 points into piercing to start. And why would you want to do that and not the rest of this? Well, 10 points to start with. You've only spent 50, so we got 40 here, 10 here. Once you put 10 points here into extended might, you now unlock your main offensive stars. And these are our slottable stars for the blue tree. So these go up here in this area. Binding Aura, this buffs, sweeps. This buffs any AOE damage, so you want this as soon as possible. So your main damage type is AOE on this build. This is going to buff all of that by 10%. In addition, Thaumaturge is going to count for those damage over time effects as well. 10% bonus here. So these are the two best on this part. Deadly Aim, don't use it. Why? There's no single target damage really on this build. So keep that in mind. Once you have those two maxed out, you should be... Uh, around 150 blue CP, so that's like 450 total CP. Then you have some more options. I would go right away personally to Fighting Finesse. This gives us 10% additional crit damage. So on top of being a Khajiit, on top of being a Templar, we have an additional 10% crit damage and crit healing. This is really good, you guys. Slot that bad boy right there. And then just an extra one here, Untamed Aggression for the extra weapon and spell damage. That stacks nicely on the Templar because we have two sources of spell damage, right? We have major sorcery and minor sorcery, so that'll turn out really good. Now, if you have any extra points, the rest is just gravy. It's just good stuff. Eldritch Insight, you can get more Max Magicka. You can come in here into Staving Death. This is your uh, survivability and like defensive passives. So 10 points into Quick Recovery will unlock Preparation. That's uh, Mitigation, so 8% damage reduction. That's a good one. Again, if you have enough champion points, if not, focus on your damage stars first here, up in the hand area, and fighting finesse. Those would be the main ones to start with. Let's talk about Red Tree. Last but not least, this is your like core combat abilities, survival, sustain. Some really good stuff in here too. I would start here out on the edge. So rejuvenation is really nice. This gives you extra, all your extra recoveries actually. So really good on this setup. And then Balance Vitality for the extra health. Yes, yes, get that. Then we'll come down here into Sprinter, Hasty, and Hero's Vigor. Now, you can just put one stage into each of these guys. Once you put one stage into Hero's Vigor, that unlocks all of these. So you have many more options at that point. Siphoning Spells is actually really good for this type of build if you're grinding a lot of enemies. This gives you 1,500 Magicka back per kill. That's essentially infinite sustain. The more enemies you're killing, the more sustain you have coming in. And with AOE damage, it's just nonstop, you guys. It's it's pretty powerful. So I would get that. And then uh, let's see. I do have one other kind of unique one here. So if you start in Tumbling, you can unlock Defiance. This gives you Break Free. That's pretty good. I'm playing around with this CP star called Slippery. When you slot this, this is automatic Break Free. So this is basically the ultimate lazy easy build that I'm going for. I don't even have to break free. My uh, Templar breaks free automatically for no cost, but there is a cooldown on that. That's only once every 21 seconds. So keep that in mind. The other option that's really good for solo builds is if you come here in the main area, come up to Bastion. If you're running a damage shield, you know, you can either run like Harness Magicka or Dampen Magic for more protection, especially if you're lower level, you might think about that. Or you can run the damage shield enchant on your front bar weapon for a free damage shield, Bastion will buff that quite nicely. 
All right, so we talked about the gear, the skills, champion points. The last thing is the outfit style. If you're curious about this setup, I do actually really like the style on my Khajiit. It's called um, Arc Sand Armory. I believe this is from the Reach, the uh, daily quest there. So this is in the light armor style Got it on all the body pieces, uh, including the staff. So there you go. All right, everybody, that's going to wrap up this solo one bar grind god build for the Magicka Templar. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and you found it informative. Of course, if you did, don't forget to crush that like button and make sure you are subscribed for many more ESO guides and build videos just like this one. And if you want more information on this build, including the two bar setup, as well as those CP loadouts for 300, 600, 900, and 1200 CP, those are all going to be listed in the written guide. There's a link to that in the description and the pinned comment down below. So definitely check those out. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there and I will see you around in the next video.